Iron and its role against cancer, part one. Hello, it's Dr. Colleen Huber, a naturopathic medical doctor in Tempe, Arizona. Here on October 30, 2019, in our ongoing video series on cancer and biochemistry. Today, I would like to tell you about iron and wow, all the misconceptions about it with regard to cancer. Very unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who believe, for some reason, that iron may be a risky or undesirable substance to have in the body if one is dealing with a cancer diagnosis. Well, I can tell you that this is yet another myth that I'm just going to have to knock down today, just like I have had to refute some old doctor's tales in previous videos in the series. You may remember, for example, that I had to explain why the old canard about not giving vitamin B12 to cancer patients was totally bogus. That was Cancer and Biochemistry 9. That got over 100,000 views, by the way. That wasn't even my best video, so I'm still trying to figure that one out. As you know from my other videos in the series, our whole goal is to detour away from this pathway, because this is the cancer pathway, here where pyruvate goes to lactate. Indeed, our goal is the opposite path to that, because cancer requires the machinery along here where pyruvate goes to lactate. If we are going to defeat cancer, we have to take the other fork in the road. We have to come along the alternate pathway here instead, along this path that comes right down here through the mitochondria. Now, how are we going to accomplish that? How are we going to come into each and every cell and make sure that of the 1,000 or so mitochondria in every cell in your body, we choose the correct path. My answer to that has been the same over the last 12 years of the history of the clinic. The history of us giving successful treatments during all of that time to cancer patients. The answer, provide all the raw materials needed to move along here, every nutrient every vitamin, every mineral, every amino acid necessary for these processes here to work. And preferably, provide absolutely none of these that are required here, if at all possible. That's not really possible, but we minimize the resources needed for this pathway, this one here, to the best of our ability. And yes, folks, that requires some dietary interventions, as I discuss in Cancer and Biochemistry number three and four. Why do I want to make this biochemical influence? Why do I care? Why do I want to bring metabolism here rather than over here? Because I want to nourish normal metabolism and I want to starve cancer. I want to crowd out cancer, making it superfluous, making it unnecessary, making it some waste of time, waste of resources that your body no longer considers to be necessary or useful. I want to make cancer obsolete in your body. If you stop giving it the fuel it needs, and you start fueling the alternative pathway instead, now you are giving cancer no reason to remain in your body. And folks, that is pretty much what we need to do regarding cancer. That is the only way I know of to defeat it without side effects. And that comes from 12 years of my working full-time with cancer patients. We know that cancer arose in the first place because there was damage here in the normal metabolism of the mitochondria, which put obstacles in some of these paths. At the same time, there was abundance over here. So cancer grew as a response to that, or as an undesirable solution to the problem of too much sugar in the system, at the same time as too much damage here. Okay, today, let's talk about how iron plays into this. My question is, how does iron facilitate the flow along this road here? First, let's look at the citric acid cycle, which you remember is here. This is a great image of the citric acid cycle and what it accomplishes from curefe.org. Eric Minichel is dedicated to researching prion diseases. In this image, he shows a lot that is useful for us to know. Please remember from my previous videos in this series that the role of the citric acid cycle is to oxidize or break down all the types of foods that we eat from their common product molecule, which is acetyl-CoA. So what is the purpose of breaking down food? Why do our bodies go to all that trouble? Why not just have almond in, almond out? Onuts.com shares this photo. The reason we don't just have same in, same out is because we need to harvest some things from that food. What the citric acid cycle gives us is NADH and FADH2. These molecules provide electrons. Yes, the highly coveted electrons. As I described in a previous video, these are useful currency units for all kinds of functions in our bodies. 
You may remember this cycle from my previous videos, the cycle, the citric acid cycle here. What I would like to point out today is how iron plays an impressive role here in that it increases the activity of four enzymes in the citric acid cycle. These are the four enzymes, citrate synthase here, aconitase here, isocitrate dehydrogenase here, and succinic dehydrogenase here. The purpose of these particular enzymes is to break down each of these amino acids, which we derive from the proteins that we eat. This citric acid cycle is hugely important to generate electrons for use in the electron transport chain here. Now, how do we know that iron is essential for each of these enzymes? Because it has been found through research that when iron is given to the system, the activity of these enzymes increases. We also know it because if we give a chemical called deferoxamine, which removes iron, if we give that to the body, then the activity of each of these enzymes here decreases. And you will not be at all surprised to learn this. When that happens, the citric acid cycle slows down. And in fact, everything in the mitochondria then slows down when iron is depleted. And not surprisingly, it has been shown that when you deplete iron, glycolysis and lactate formation are increased. In other words, take iron away from the cancer patient and you have stimulated the cancer pathway. This article discusses these experiments. There is a lot to take in here regarding the role of iron in its actions against the origin and development of cancer. So much that I'm going to continue the topic with our next video in this series. For now, I'm Dr. Colleen Huber. It is October 30, 2019, and thank you for watching.